Let's get weird into it. Number 9. The Naked Greek Guy You've probably heard the story. Ancient Greek brainiac Archimedes is tasked with figuring out if the king's new crown is pure gold, or if some shady jeweler has ripped him off. He can't melt it down, obviously, because the king is rather fond of his head staying attached to his body. Archimedes is stumped. He's hit a wall. He's probably spent weeks staring at this crown, getting nothing but a headache and a deep-seated resentment for precious metals. So, he does what any stressed-out genius does. He decides to take a bath. As he sinks into the tub, he notices the water level rise. And in a flash, it hits him. The volume of the water displaced is equal to the volume of the object submerged. He can measure the crown's volume, and since he knows the weight of gold, he can calculate if the crown's density matches up. It's a brilliant, world-changing insight. According to legend, he was so overcome with joy that he leaped out of the tub and ran through the streets of Syracuse, stark naked, screaming, Eureka, which is Greek for, I have found it, but probably also Greek for, please don't arrest me, I'm having a scientific breakthrough. This is the quintessential aha moment. A sudden, unexpected flood of clarity that solves a problem you've been wrestling with for ages. It's not a slow, logical deduction. It's a flash of lightning. It feels like the answer was beamed directly into your skull from a passing satellite. And it turns out, your brain has a very specific and slightly dramatic way of making this happen. Minus the public nudity, usually. Number 8. The Agony Prerequisite before you can experience that sweet, sweet release of a eureka moment, your brain demands a sacrifice. It demands pain. Specifically, the excruciating mental agony of being completely and utterly stuck. This is called an impasse. It's that point where you've tried every solution you can think of. You've looked at the problem from the left. You've looked at it from the right. You've turned it upside down and Googled it with 12 different phrasings. Nothing. You're just staring at a mental brick wall and the only thing you're accomplishing is giving yourself a tension headache that could crack concrete. This phase is not optional. It's the cover charge for entry into the AHA club. Neuroscientists who study insight have found that this period of intense frustration is crucial. While you're banging your head against that wall, your prefrontal cortex, the part of your brain responsible for focused attention and logical reasoning, is working overtime. It's loading all the relevant and irrelevant information about the problem into your short-term memory. It's activating all the known neural pathways, all the standard solutions, and finding them all to be dead ends. This is important. Your brain has to exhaust all the wrong answers before it's willing to look for the right one in a weird place. It's basically the cognitive equivalent of checking every single pocket for your keys before admitting you have to reevaluate your entire life. So next time you feel like throwing your laptop out the window in frustration, take heart. You're not failing. You're just paying your dues. Number seven, your subconscious janitor. So you've hit the wall. You've exhausted your conscious mind. You give up. You decide to take a shower, go for a walk, or fall into a deep, dreamless sleep fueled by frustration and three bags of potato chips. This is the magic moment. Not because you've quit but because you've finally shut up long enough for the real work to begin. While your conscious mind is off thinking about what to have for dinner or replaying an embarrassing thing you said in 2007, a different part of your brain clocks in for its shift. This is the incubation period. Think of your conscious mind as a frantic, over-caffeinated office worker who has made a huge mess of the place. Papers are everywhere. There are half-finished ideas in every corner, and the main desk is cluttered with failed attempts. When you step away from the problem, that office worker goes on a mandatory coffee break. And in comes the night shift janitor, your subconscious. This janitor isn't bound by the same rules. It doesn't look at the problem linearly. It just quietly starts tidying up. It picks up a discarded idea from the floor, notices it connects to a scribble on a whiteboard, and links it to a crumpled note in the trash can. It's making loose, broad connections that your hyper-focused conscious mind would have dismissed as illogical. It's not working harder, it's working weirder. This is why the best ideas strike when you're doing something completely unrelated and mundane. Your brain's janitor just found a solution while sweeping under the metaphorical rug, and it sent a memo upstairs. Number six, the neurological flashbang. What is actually happening inside your skull when that solution finally bursts through? For a long time, this was a complete mystery. It felt like magic. But using fMRI and EEG scans, scientists have actually watched an aha moment happen in real time. 
and it's basically a tiny electrical fireworks show. Right before the moment of insight, there's a sudden burst of high-frequency brainwaves known as gamma waves. This isn't a little flicker. It's a massive, synchronized spike, specifically in a tiny part of your brain's right hemisphere called the anterior superior temporal gyrus. Let's translate that from science speak. The right hemisphere is your brain's creative, pattern-recognizing, let's-think-outside-the-box artist. The temporal gyrus is involved in knitting together distant or unrelated concepts. So, when you're in that incubation phase, this area is quietly trying to connect the dots. The gamma wave burst is the moment it succeeds. It's like all the neurons in that region suddenly shout, I've got it, in perfect unison. One researcher described it as a cognitive flashbang. It's so abrupt and intense that it effectively drowns out all other mental chatter. For a split second, the only thing your brain can perceive is this brand new, beautiful, fully formed solution. It's not a thought you constructed. It's a thought that arrived, gift-wrapped, and ready to go. Your brain literally throws a tiny, localized rave to celebrate finding the answer. Number five, the dopamine bribe. That feeling. The jolt of an aha moment isn't just an idea, it's a physical sensation. There's a rush of energy, a wave of pleasure, a profound sense of satisfaction that makes you want to pump your fist in the air. That's not just you being dramatic. That's neurochemistry. Your brain is giving you a cookie. The moment that gamma wave burst goes off and the solution clicks into place, your brain's reward system floods your system with a neurotransmitter you've probably heard of. Dopamine. Dopamine is the brain's multi-purpose tool for saying, yes, do that again. It's the same chemical that gets released when you eat delicious food, win a game, or listen to a fantastic piece of music. It's a powerful motivator. In the context of an aha moment, this dopamine hit serves a critical evolutionary purpose. Problem solving is hard. It takes energy. It's frustrating. Without a reward, our ancestors might have just given up trying to figure out how to make a better spear and decided to just try punching a woolly mammoth instead. A historically unsuccessful strategy. The dopamine rush is a bribe from your own biology. It creates a positive feedback loop, training you to enjoy the struggle of finding novel solutions. It's your brain's way of saying, good job not being a complete idiot this time. Here's a little treat. Now don't screw it up. Number four, the confidence scam. Here's the unsettling part. That feeling of absolute, unshakable certainty that accompanies an aha moment. The overwhelming conviction that your newfound solution is not just good, but cosmically, irrefutably, correct. It's a complete fabrication. A beautiful, compelling, and incredibly useful lie. Psychologists have discovered that the feeling of insight and the accuracy of the insight are two separate events in the brain. You can have one without the other. You can have a brilliant idea that feels mundane. And you can have a completely boneheaded, nonsensical idea that arrives with the force of a divine revelation. The dopamine rush and the neurological flashbang are about the process of finding a new connection, not the quality of that connection. Your brain is rewarding you for breaking the impasse, for creating a new mental map. It doesn't actually run a fact check on the map first. This is why you can be so utterly convinced you've figured out the perfect comeback in an argument three hours later in the shower, only to realize in the morning that it makes no sense. Your brain gave you the eureka feeling, but the idea itself was a dud. It's like your brain ships the genius idea and the genius feeling in two separate packages. And sometimes, one gets lost in the mail. Number three, the mandatory vacation. So if aha moments are so great, can you force one to happen? The answer is a frustrating yes and no. You can't just sit down, grit your teeth, and command your temporal gyrus to fire. In fact, trying to force it is the best way to prevent it from ever happening. This is a phenomenon called cognitive fixation where focusing too intensely on a problem actually narrows your thinking and locks you into the same failed approaches over and over again. You're just digging the same mental trench deeper and deeper. The real trick to encouraging insight is strategic surrender. It's about creating the conditions for your subconscious janitor to do its job. This is where all that seemingly flaky advice about taking a walk, sleeping on it, or having a shower comes from. It's not about magic. It's about a change in context. When you do something monotonous and relaxing, you enter a state of mild distraction. Your prefrontal cortex lets its guard down, your focus softens, and your mind is free to wander. This allows those broader, weaker associations to bubble up to the surface. It's also helpful to expose yourself to new stimuli. A different environment, 
a conversation with someone outside your field, reading a random book. It's all about feeding your brain new, unrelated bits of information that your subconscious can play with. Basically, the best way to solve a hard problem is to respectfully tell your brain you're going on a little vacation and you trust it to handle things while you're gone. Number two, the tip of the tongue nightmare. To truly appreciate the glory of an aha moment, you must first understand its evil twin, the tip of the tongue phenomenon. It's the single most infuriating state of human consciousness. You know the answer. You can feel its shape. You know it starts with a B. You know it's three syllables long. You can almost hear it, a phantom word echoing in the corridors of your mind. But you cannot, for the love of all that is holy, retrieve it. The file is there, but the file name is corrupted. This state, which has the delightfully clinical name of lethologica, is the polar opposite of an aha moment. Where insight is a sudden, joyous flood of information, lethologica is a painful, tantalizing drought. It's a retrieval failure. The information is stored in your brain, but the neural pathway to access it is temporarily blocked. It's like a terrible librarian who knows exactly where the book you need is, but just stands there, smiling, and refusing to get it for you. This highlights just how incredible an aha moment really is. It's not just about finding information. It's about building a brand new bridge to it. The tip of the tongue state is when the old bridge has collapsed and your brain's construction crew is on a union-mandated break. It's the cognitive equivalent of buffering on a one-bar Wi-Fi signal, and the password is in a language you don't speak. Number one, the insight cascade. The most powerful and unsettling thing about a true aha moment is that it's rarely just one idea. A genuine breakthrough doesn't just solve the problem you were working on. It reframes the entire landscape. It's not like finding a single missing puzzle piece. It's like realizing you've been trying to assemble the puzzle upside down the whole time. When you flip it over, hundreds of pieces suddenly click into place all at once. This is the insight cascade. One key insight triggers another, and another, in a rapid chain reaction. The solution to problem A suddenly reveals the solution to problems B, C, and D. Problems you didn't even know were related. Your entire mental model of a subject can be rewritten in a matter of seconds. Scientists experience this when a new theory suddenly explains decades of confusing data. Artists feel it when a new technique unlocks a whole new style. You felt it when you finally understand a complex concept. And suddenly, all the previous lessons and examples make perfect sense. It's a profound shift in perspective. The frustration and impasse weren't just about finding one answer. They were about the pressure needed to break through a fundamental misunderstanding. It's the moment you stop being a person stuck on a problem and become a beautiful, unstoppable avalanche of comprehension. At least, until you get stuck on the next thing five minutes later. That's all for today. I'll be making similar videos in the future. Subscribe to see them.